How do you think that the role of faith or spirituality, something high or something outside of yourself, how do you think that that actually cultivates the resilience? I think it does in a couple of ways. And, you know, this it's really interesting because we, we live in a very secular society. Um, and I do a lot of work in the Fortune 1000. Okay. Um, and, you know, when you're training within the Fortune 1000, they expect you to be secular. But I came to a point hmm. um, where I felt as a social scientist, it was actually my duty to go to people and say, hey, guess what? If you want to take the next step in resilience, you need to think about these data that we're gathering because they are incontrovertible. Mm. And we, we're looking at four levels of connection to stuff larger than yourself. You know, some people are just obsessed with their individual goals, the big corner office, you know, what, right. making money. Sure. Others will do that, but they also think about their family, a nuclear family, extended family. And then there's a third level where people take care of that, but they're also very invested in their community. But there's a fourth level where people are really getting outside of themselves, and that's going to be a religious faith or a spirituality or a value system. And what we found was that for each step up across those four levels, people were significantly more resilient. So in 2010, when I was asked to do a TED talk, I said to the TED people, I'm going to talk about the importance of spirituality, faith, um, in terms of resilience. They said, no, we don't want you to do that. Mm. Said, well, I think I need to um, because these data now are unquestionable. Right. And so uh, what I found was that the Fortune 1000 were, for me, surprisingly receptive of this message. And I think that the way that, to answer your question, that it plays out is I, I conceptualize it like this. If you're at that lowest level where only your individual goals are important to you, um, then your world is extremely small. And that means when an adversity comes up in your world, it's a major it's obstacle, a huge yeah. mountain, right? But if your world is your community, less so. And if your world is something that has a piece of eternity to it, and I think that's the litmus test, it can be spirituality in the broadest sense. For many people, it is a religious faith, um, but it's something that was here before they arrived on the planet and will be here after they've gone, and they're attaching to it while they're here. And that gives them a breadth of perspective and existence um, that means that even the greatest obstacle is really just a speed bump. And I, so I think that is the way, that's one of the ways in which it actually plays out in a person's life and makes them more resilient. Plus they're galvanized to act. They wake up every morning with a sense of purpose. Right. Right. I imagine that purpose would play a, a huge role in a person's resiliency because you can withstand any sort of what if you have your why that's that's attached. That's the very – that's the cliche. It's becoming cliche now to say that, but that it, it helps you keep everything in perspective. Yes. And, you know, we should never allow Viktor Frankl to become cliched. Right. Uh, and that comes from Viktor Frankl, of course. And, um, you know, that, it's just groundbreaking stuff. Yeah. The work that he did was so important. We – um, as psychologists, I think, became so bound up in social science that we we left behind some of these really important early messages that our colleagues were saying. And I think that was a loss. I feel like it's being recaptured. Um, and I do believe that it is, you know, for, for people, it's often religious faith, but it's not always. Um, for some people, it's a, it's a love of country. I do a lot of work with the military, and I see them wake up every morning. They want to protect the 350 million right. know, citizens of the U.S. That's their passion. That's bigger than themselves. Yes, That's a, and it is an larger idea. than themselves. So sure. interesting. And it's, it's kind of interesting also that depending on what environment you find yourself in, you're oftentimes saying the same thing but with different words. So uh, when you go to the Fortune 1000 companies, if you say religion, right, or faith, it's like, whoa. But if you say resiliency and uh, connecting with something bigger than yourself, it's like, oh, well, we'll welcome that. It, meanwhile, you're saying essentially the same thing. It's like yeah. on the street, you call it vibes. On, you know, in, in, in a more mystical or, or new age talk, you call it energy. But we're all kind of saying a similar thing of, of that there's something deeper, there's something bigger to reality than than just the surface level. Absolutely so. And, you know, I would say that 90% of the resilient skills that um, I'm taking into um, organizational settings are really not about 
spirituality or religion. They're about day to day, how do we quiet the mind, control our impulses, do better problem solving. But if we neglect that critical 10%, then we're not doing people a service. And I will, if I'm training or consulting, I will say to people, these are the data and we've been collecting them since 2006. And the data clearly say that with each step up in the you know, circle of connection that you have to something greater than self, you will be more resilient. Now, I'm not telling you that you need to get faith. This isn't a, a tent revival meeting. Right. Um, but what I am saying is that you want to connect to something larger than self to the degree that you are comfortable. And um, because it, you know, it's, it's very clear that it's gonna matter in terms of your personal resilience. It's so interesting because you know, the way that people tend to think about spirituality is that it's something removed from the world. Where I always thought, one of, the, one, of the, one of the things I always found fascinating about traditional Judaism was this idea that spirituality is defined as exactly what you're talking about, refining oneself and, and figuring out how to cope with the struggles and the um, idiosyncrasies that we may have, how to be a resilient, that is spiritual. It's implementing within yourself uh, a change of your negative character traits, the things that are holding you back. That is the spirituality. It's not leaving the world. It's actually transforming the self. And so it's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of interesting that we maybe have a tendency to, to run from spirituality, from the word religion, but meanwhile, in, in traditional Judaism anyway, religion or spirituality is this very thing, is transforming the self and transforming the world. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's two sides of the same thing. I really love that interpretation, and I, I think it's really important that we keep that in mind, that this isn't something that we do on a Saturday or a Sunday. Right. right. It should be something that is part of our, our, our every day. And, and you're mentioning that leads me to think about um, some of the examples that I see just in, in people's everyday movement through the world. So someone who is not resilient, as they're moving through the world and they encounter a problem, their instinct is to say, why me? This is disastrous. I don't deserve this. And whereas someone who is resilient has that greater perspective even on these day-to-day -day adversities. And they will in fact say, why not me? Right. And or they, what can this teach me? Or exactly. Yeah. How can I learn from this? Or, you know, you can see they almost get a sparkle in their eye when they hit up against the adversity and they're thinking, well, this will be an interesting one to try to solve. And mm -hmm. this is a great challenge that's been sent my way. How am I going to deal with this? Or what strengths do I have that I can bring to bear here? Um, that can make the situation better, not just for me, but for others. So, and that does get to your point that this is a day in, day out thing. So in Jewish history, there's been a lot of resilience, mostly because of a lot of trauma and persecution and all sorts of negative stuff. Have you seen a correlation between resiliency and people having trauma in their life? What, or how would you say that trauma actually maybe even helps a person be more resilient person? Um, I'm not an uh, expert um, or not even an amateur expert, not even remotely knowledgeable, um, except um, what most people know about what the Jewish people have been through historically. It's certainly nothing that I personally have lived. Um, I know the numbers and it's inconceivable. It's absolutely inconceivable. But if, I, if you force me to make some suppositions, as to why a people could get through the things that the Jewish people have been through, I would say it's faith in something larger than mm. self. I would say it's a strong sense of belonging. Um, and I, I've got to say, we're here at the National Jewish Retreat, and you f I'm not Jewish, but you feel that sense of belonging. Mm. And it's a wonderful feeling that um, we are in this together. Um, I think that uh, you know, there you could probably recount um, the same kind of thing outside of the the Jewish faith yeah. for what people have endured and gone through. I think that that sense of belonging and sticking together and not allowing this to fragment us, but instead we're actually going to bond closer together because of all of things that have uh, all of these things that have happened to us. Um, I think that's been a critical piece of the of the puzzle, and all of that gets to this sense of resilience. 
The Roar Jewish Learning Institute has the largest collection of Jewish media online. Hit subscribe for more. Hey everyone, if you liked that video, please consider hitting that subscribe button in the corner for more great content.